Hello everyone, Storm11 here. Today we're tracking for possibility for some severe weather that may happen across parts of Colorado, Kansas today. And also today we have a risk for severe storms across parts of Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Alabama. Then on Tuesday, which is tomorrow, we got a pretty large area we're watching for some possibility for some severe weather, which can have some very large hail, some damaging winds, and maybe even for a couple tornadoes as well. And then we're watching Tuesday for this area in here that may experience some severe weather as well. It's going to be an active couple days for severe weather. So let's go ahead and get started with the SPC outlook here. And as you can see here, we actually have an enhanced risk for severe weather across parts of northwestern Kansas. Here's your tornado probability. So you can see here, there's a 5% chance for a tornado in a 25 miles of any given point. Uh, really for southeastern Arkansas, uh, eastern Louisiana, the southern half of Mississippi, and even for southwestern Alabama as well. Got a low end tornado risk for northeastern Colorado, far northwestern Kansas, and far southwestern Nebraska as well. Damaging winds looks to be the biggest threat here. It could be some very strong winds as well with what could be a little MCS uh, going through some of those places in there. And then the hail threat will also be there as well, but we do not expect very large hail there. So here's day two, which is Monday. We got a large slack risk area, anywhere from southeastern Oklahoma, far northeastern Texas, all the way up into north, uh, southwestern Ohio, uh, central Indiana, north central Illinois, and central Kentucky. Your tornado probabilities looks to be sticking around probably anywhere from northeastern Oklahoma all the way into parts of western Kentucky and far southwestern Indiana. Damage winds will also be there, but there could be a chance for some significant winds at across parts of southwestern Kentucky, southern Illinois, southeastern Missouri, and northeastern Arkansas. We may have to watch for maybe a pretty decent cluster of thunderstorms there as well, which may blast to the northeast here where we have quite a bit of cape in place especially into the overnight hours we also have very steep lap rates and there's even for the chance for some significant hail as well which is really going to depend on if your wind shear is going to stay weak if your wind shear is going to stay weak that may lower the risk for the tornado probabilities but that will increase your hail risk which there will be a possibility we could see some very large hail and I would not be too surprised if we'll see an enhanced risk somewhere in this zone, especially within this hatched area in here. We may get to see a possibility for a enhanced risk for some of these areas in there as well. Moving on to day three, which is Tuesday, we got a slight risk for severe weather for parts of central Louisiana, through Mississippi, uh, central and northern Alabama, central Tennessee, south central Kentucky, and also for northwestern Georgia. And that margin risk does go all the way up to southwestern New York as well. In the area we're monitoring pretty closely here, and don't be surprised if this slight risk does get bumped into probably a little bit more of Kentucky, possibly to parts of West Virginia and also Ohio as well. And there may be a possibility to see any enhanced risk upgrade. If there's going to be an enhanced risk, it may be somewhere in the zone in here, but I'll show you guys why in a moment here. But it doesn't show any significant risk for severe weather, but that may change here as soon as I show you guys these bottle runs. By the way, we do have a severe thunderstorm watch for parts of northeastern, uh, well, east central Colorado here. And you see it does not include the Denver area, but it does include places like Yuma, Fort Morgan, Burlington, Colorado Springs, and Roxboro Park. Get a possibility for some ping pong sized hail, scattered wind gusts up to 70 miles an hour, and also be some frequent lightning as well with those, some of those storms out there as well. So let's check out those storms out across those areas uh, late for the rest of today. You can see it here, indicated by the herd model. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Move this down if it's going to let me. There we go. You can see here, up here, we may get to see some severe weather up here as well. That's a possibility. I don't think they have those areas highlighted up there. But I think there would be a small chance for some, probably some hail, maybe some damaged winds up there. 
But the Cluster of Thunderstorms we need to watch for is right here. This is going to be your MCS complex here. And you can see here, as we get into the overnight hours, you can see here how it bows out right there. Let me get a different color here. You can see how it bows out right there. That's where we may need to watch for the potential for some significant winds there, which is 75 miles an hour and greater. Eventually, it'll die down as we move, as we get closer to the morning hours on Monday. And you can see how that continues to move to the southeast and be dying down as it does so and then bam it's gone then as we move into parts of Dixie Alley you can see as we move into later today we may get to see a couple supercells here we will have a pretty good level of jet over some of these areas in here and there'll be a decent amount of wind shear to work with across some of these areas in here so that may produce all hazards you can see here couple more supercells blowing up, up up across parts of central and northern Mississippi as well. If we back this up a little bit, if we try to get a, sa a good sounding here real quick, if we can find one. Here's a decent sounding right here. You got a pretty small photograph curve right here. Critical angle number 61. There's, a, there's a, just enough story to felicity. Uh, you will have some cape in place. Good dew points of temperature. And let me actually back that up a little bit. Yeah, that'll be favorable for damage winds here at the surface. DK number is low, but when, since we got this here, it'll still be favorable for some damage winds. We do have a little bit of wind varying in height here. You got winds in the upper levels moving from the southwest, and at the surface is from the south. Uh, looks lap rates looks to be weak on this setup here as well, so this will be favorable. For maybe for some damage winds and maybe a little bit of a tornado risk on that setup there as well. And it should diminish as we move it to the overnight hours. But there may be a possibility, maybe a low end severe weather risk for parts of Dixie Alley, uh, for our parts of Alabama, and eventually getting into parts of Georgia as we move in on to Monday. All right, let's move in on to Tuesday. This is where things start to get. Actually, I meant Monday, not Tuesday. Not Tuesday. So this is going to be into Monday. So in the morning hours here, we'll have a shortwave trough moving through here. This will be continuing to move to the east here. We may have to monitor this area here for the possibility for some supercells. The supercell composite numbers are elevated out there, which is a combination of wind shear and cape, which will be plenty of cape to work with out there. We may have to watch for some of these thunderstorms out here. They may try to rotate a little bit. A low end risk, but it, the possibility is there. But check out parts of Georgia and Alabama. Could be seeing some large hailstorms out there. And you also have some pretty decent storms out across parts of North Carolina and also Virginia into parts of West Virginia as well. And eventually, as we focus up here to northern Illinois, so you got some thunderstorm activity up there. And you can see here there's one particular one right there that may produce some damage to winds and maybe some hail with some of the storms there, especially when that elevated mix layer comes in, which is dry air at 700 millibars. That's your elevated mix layer, and usually that will increase your hail threat potential, especially for significant hail as well. And that elevated mix layer will be moving into parts of Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and also for parts of Indiana as well. We'll be dealing with, with the elevated mix layer. But then as we start to get to the overnight hours, check out some of these big storms out here, especially across parts of Missouri. I believe on the last video we had a cap out here, but it doesn't look like we have a cap out there anymore. So we'll get a sounding out there. Yeah. Well, there is a little bit of a cap here, but I think those updrafts will be strong enough for to blow through that cap there. But check out this wind varying at height. Wow. Check that out at the surface. We got plenty of plenty of cape to work with as well. So this probably be favorable. Perhaps maybe some hail, maybe some damage to winds as well. Even that D cape number is pretty high with 1300. And we have a little bit of a split with the dew point and temperature line there as well at the surface. And then this is where we kind of have a possibility for an MCS complex here 
for parts of southeastern Missouri to southern Illinois. So that will eventually get into parts of western Kentucky and eventually get into parts of southern Indiana as well. Definitely got to watch for that complex of storms, which then may produce some significant damage winds. But not only that, maybe even for some large hail, depending on your wind shear environment out there. And you also see here some more storms developing a little bit further to the east as well in the morning hours. And these cluster of thunderstorms may determine your threat later in the day. And that's the max right there. That only goes out 48 hours out there as well. But let's check out that wind shear, though. We'll see how much wind shear that could be out there. At least here. But we'll take a look to the high-risk NAM while that loads. You can see here with that round of convection there going by earlier in the day on Monday. Shows a little bit of a MCS up here, but I believe that's believe that's the only model that's showing that so I'm not gonna buy that at this time here but check out this MCS complex up here moving quickly to the northeast here uh, those are the ones that may produce significant damage winds of greater than 75 miles an hour you can see here how it just moves very quick to the northeast even it shows a big storm by Louisville uh, by the Louisville area by Tuesday morning there but then here we'll wait we'll wait on the next day here but like I said the bulk share is really going to matter on the setup here you can see as we get into the overnight hours there's some bulk share to work with here but areas that doesn't have a whole lot of bulk share like given this area here for example there may be a risk for some significant hail and that's something we're going to pay attention to as well, and here's another area here with weak bulk shear, and that could lead to a possibility for a significant hail risk as well. So it's just really going to depend on on that wind shear out there as well. We'll check out the superset composite here as well, and we'll probably. Actually, I probably do not want to do that yet, but we're going to do it anyways. But we'll check out the NAM while that loads. So again, here's the NAM here. You can see here, it does show some thunderstorms. A little bit more isolated in nature. You got one up here, another one here, and a few others out here as well. So it doesn't look to be as widespread. But you can see it then it starts to get going early Tuesday afternoon there as well. And there's going to be a low pressure system nearby here. And we got to watch for this area here. The highest NAM, oh boy. It's got a lot of cape going on there. But let's check out this first. So again, this is your super set composite here. So this is the combination of uh, cape and wind shear. And you can see here, the numbers are not that high, but it's still favorable for maybe if for an isolated super server. So, and even for areas, for any storm that forms out here, and there may be a possibility you could get a supercell out of this here. Or maybe at least a rotating thunderstorm. We'll get a sounding out here across parts of Arkansas. See what we got going on out here. A little bit of sign in to work on, uh, to work with here. Negative 111. Yeah, don't want to be that favorable for some severe weather. But you do have a pretty good elevated mix layer right here. Let me change the color. We'll go with blue. But you do have that elevated mix layer going on here. Pretty strong. Got a lot of wind varying height near the surface. That's kind of insane right there. Uh, pretty good dew point number as well. That Elvin mix layer is going to lead to some good middle of elaborate numbers. You do have some sorry to Felicity to work with as well, and a very pretty small holograph there. So this will be favorable for all hazards here. But that tornado risk probably will stay a little bit low end with that sounding right there. Then we'll get one out in southwestern Kentucky here. This is getting to early in the day on Tuesday 
and you can see here already kind of into the morning hours we still got a lot of cape in the morning if that's going to be the case there those cape numbers will be pretty high during the afternoon which i'll show you guys the uh, high res nam on that in a moment here but yeah definitely favorable favorable for some supercells out there as well so again the primary threats for tuesday here not tuesday monday uh for so the primary threats on monday damage of winds and particularly these regions out here many watch for the possibility for some significant winds here with that mcs complex uh, and there's also a chance for significant hail which is pretty much in these similar areas in here Maybe probably a little further to the southwest as well, to a little bit more of Arkansas. And also for the tornado threat, which probably a little bit more focused again in this uh, circle here. And don't be too surprised if we get an enhanced risk upgrade, especially in the tri-state region, which is like right here. For parts of the tri-state region. And that probably hail-driven and maybe even wind driven as well i don't think the enhanced risk will be driven by the tornado threat i think they'll stay at five percent but i think the wind and hail may get upgrade to 30 percent hatched so it's definitely similar to watch uh, on those storms there for now but if we check out the uh high risk name real quick with those super sub composite numbers it's a little bit more favorable it's more widespread i mean check out these numbers here I'm high as a 27 out in eastern Arkansas. And there's a little bit of a cap there in the middle of us, but I'm sure that those updrafts will probably blow past for that cap there. That's a little bit of a weak cap there. But a strong elevated mix layer here. Uh, plenty of cape, 4,200. That's a lot. Uh, D cape looks, pretty, looks to be pretty good. Got a pretty good holograph there, a little bit of a medium size, uh, medium size holograph right there so that'd be favorable for a tornado threat and same way for the critical angle number so relative velocity favorable energy helicity index will be favorable as well but it's really all going to depend on will a storm form in that area that's kind of the question right there because it seems like if a storm could form there they may have the chance for all hazards up there but so we kind of move on here to the overnight hours seems like you're Best environment here for supercells looks to be more focused across parts of Kentucky and West Virginia at that point. This is a little bit more of a pick sounding here. But it does show, uh, ignore this. <laughs> we'll scratch that off. Uh, yeah, this will probably be favorable for a tornado risk. You got decently good sized uh, holograph here. Critical angle number 49 they ain't too shabby. Uh, plenty of storage of felicity here so this will be favorable mm, maybe possibly a strong tornado risk but i highly doubt it that's a little bit more of a curse downing it's what we white refuses call that it's a curse downing there and that's just one area it's not like a widespread area or anything like that so i don't think we're going to get a significant tornado risk out of this setup here but then let's talk about when we get into um Tuesday here and while that loads we'll check back in with the NAM so this is getting into Tuesday afternoon here you actually got a supercell into parts of Kentucky here maybe a supercell or two out of western Kentucky southern Illinois southern Indiana and northwestern Tennessee and southeastern Missouri if we move on to another frame talking about some big storms here you got some pretty big storms up across parts of Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, into parts of Georgia, parts of West Virginia. Got some pretty big storms out there. But if we check out the uh, high-risk NAM here, it's a little bit of a different story here, but maybe a little bit aggressive with this here. So this is getting into during the day on Tuesday. Watch this front out here. Uh, right out here watch for that front there those line of storms will blow up very quickly into a pretty organized squall line here and this is in getting into Tuesday evening here in the late afternoon you got a pretty impressive squall line from really about around Lexington Kentucky 
all the way back down into parts of southern south central mississippi here and if this is right here you're talking about possibly for a significant wind event here and let me show you guys some pretty ridiculous parameters here uh, we're going to check out the uh, surface surface base cape first here by the harris nav and these are the surface based uh wind gusts here indicated by the harris nav it doesn't indicate some severe wind gusts here in some places. With well, severe wind gusts is 58 miles an hour, but these numbers are pretty close here. But if you do back up a couple hours here, check out back here across parts of Mississippi here. I mean, 63 mile an hour wind gusts out there in some of these places in here. But if we kind of go into the mid levels here, that low of a jet there, 850 millibars here. This kind of tells you the story right here. Here, let me actually get that about right. There we go. 81 mile an hour winds. And sometimes these winds can get down to the surface here. This tells you the story. 81 mile an hour wind gusts, or sustained winds, which these will probably be gusts at the surface. 80, 85. Mile an hour winds at 850 millibars. So this will be a favorable environment here for the possibility for a significant damage and wind event here. If this verifies. Now, having really the NAM here, on the other hand, doesn't show much of a significant event. It's actually a little bit more scattered. Doesn't really show organized squall line. But you do have these individual cells out here as well. That may have a little bit of an increased tornado threat and maybe a large hail threat. As well, so a little bit battle in the models here, but I'm interested to see what the 18Z model runs show, especially when the rapid refresh in the herd model starts to come into view, and then we'll have a better idea with Tuesday. But I want to show you guys the high-risk dam with the surface base cape, and an AM is a little bit similar, but not as widespread with these numbers. And this is pretty impressive for this time of year. I mean, check this out. I mean, this is surface space Cape, and you got Cape numbers getting close, at least 4,500 into parts of Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama. Check out these Cape numbers across parts of the Appalachian Mountains. That's ridiculous. But I think the, if we can get a sounding out here, we'll get one in north central Kentucky. Wow, 5,400 Cape at the surface on this sounding here. You actually do have a pretty good elven mix layer as well. So this will be favorable for some very large hail. And there is some wind shear to work with here. But in the low levels and looks to be an inflow there. We may have to watch it for that chance for some very large hail as well. Now tornado threat, uh, NAM does have a little bit of a better tornado threat. That's just because this the cells are a little bit more discreet. They don't really show a squall line, but high risk damage shows a much lower tornado risk. So there's a big difference on this setup here. But either way, looks like there's going to be a lot of cape in place here. This is definitely something we got to pay attention to. We'll see if the, we'll see if it continues to show this. It also shows a lot of wind and varying height here. In the middle of this, you got winds coming from the southwest, and at the surface, you got winds coming from the south, and to be at summer mill bars they're coming from a little bit from the west so wind varying a height there definitely visible there and you got pretty good mid-level lap rates and that d cape numbers triple seven there so there's a lot of cape to work with here a lot if we go down into parts of tennessee we'll get one more down in alabama 5800 cape that is a stupid amount of cape uh, for this time of year. Has a little bit of a weaker Elvin mix layer, but that'll still be favorable. But check out those dew points. A uh, dew point of 75. That is some very muggy air out there. Although you did notice your surface, uh, uh, your story to Felicity numbers are also a little bit lower. So the tornado risk probably stay a little bit lower on this up here. But if the highest name is correct, the primary threat is going to be damaging winds. If the storms stay a little bit more discreet, then your tornado threat and the hail threat will probably rise up a little bit. 
But here's one out across parts of Alabama. Pretty much a very similar thing here. So definitely some pretty impressive soundings here. And uh, let's see, what else we want to look at? Uh, let's see. Why not take a look to the surface based uh, lift index here? So this is pretty impressive here. I should have set this to uh, surface base cape here. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. So definitely pretty an impressive environment here. So for areas across parts of Central Kentucky, you know, you're kind of in between the threat for maybe some convection uh, to come in. Other models don't show much of any convection. If that's going to be the case here in the morning, cape numbers could be as high as over 2,000. And next thing you know, when you get to Tuesday afternoon at surface lease space, they could be closing to 5,000. That's a lot of cape. Keep in mind of that, that that is something you see out in the plains and not in places like Kentucky. That's something you don't see that often here. That's something you see out in the summertime. And we are in early May. So there you go on that. You can see here with the NAM, it's a pretty similar thing. Again, it's just not as widespread, but still shows some areas having CAPE numbers exceeding 4,000, which is plenty. That's enough CAPE. And it even shows some places getting close to 5,000 joules per kilogram at the surface. So this is definitely something we're going to monitor here very closely here. Uh, definitely a little bit of a concern for Tuesday, but... Hopefully we can get a better agreement here. I'm also a little bit interested to see what the models will show. And lastly, before we end the video, we'll check out this here at the Surface Space Lift Index. You can see our very high numbers out here. I mean, check out this lift index here. And usually for a lift index, a negative six will actually be favorable for some severe weather. Negative three is not bad, but I'll say like a negative six would be favorable for severe weather. And we got numbers as high as a negative 14. So double the numbers here. So this is always something we got to monitor here very closely here. And we'll probably have it update this maybe either tomorrow or Tuesday. We'll see how thing how the models were evolved with this setup here over the next couple of days. But anyways, guys, that's all for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like this video, hit that, hit that like button. If, you're, if you really do like my channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification notifications so you never miss an upload. If you guys have questions about this, leave me in the comment section down below. I answer you guys' questions, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.